live from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the Total Education Show, the talk shop for teachers, parents, and administrators. Here's your host of the show, Neil Haley, the Total Tutor. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Total Tutor Show. I'm the host of the show, Neil Haley. You have to go to my website, TotalTutor.net, for more information. Twitter, Total Tutor, Neil S. Haley. Facebook, LinkedIn, Neil Haley. And it's exciting. Uh, the January started slow, but is finishing very, very fast. The Super Bowl, all these different things. And what I'm looking to do with the Total Tutor Show, especially with my, one, one person who started out when, I mean, the show was so small. And uh, some of those people have stayed on forever. They've st- They either leave or come back or Whatever. I want to welcome pro- program Flip Flop Learning. Suzanne goes. Suzanne, how are you? And and I, I think you enjoyed listening to those two shows last month that you were on, didn't you? Yes, sir. Absolutely. I'm enjoying all of it. I try and keep up with you, but you are a busy guy. So try to keep, stay tuned in on all the different people that you get to interview and all the information that you give everybody. Exactly. And one thing, it's a goal I started to say to myself is uh, going through business coaching. I said, I got to really look at the education brand as well of all the different things. And we got to get people on. In the last two weeks, the news shows heated up with Hamlet Garcia and his big court case. I don't know if you've been keeping up with that one. And then also we had a uh, Democratic strategist who was uh, school choice de- debating Jason and you're you're going to be lined up in a couple of weeks to debate Jason the public school guy but this game this shows more about uh, helping others like I said the network has a variety of shows for uh, uh, for a variety of people but I know you have a couple topics and I've created my own topics off the 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 fly but let's go to the first one Suzanne okay so I like to give applicable tips so you know, whenever people say, how do I do this? You know, why do I do this? Why am I homeschooling? How do I actually do it? Um, these are the tips I like to give, you know, actual steps so you can immediately apply it instead of thinking in all this theory. Yes, that sounds great, but how do we actually implement some good parenting? And then, of course, that leads into homeschooling um, and make your life easier day by day and hour by hour. So the questions I've gotten this week as we've gotten into the new spring semester, we have a ton of new homeschoolers that pulled their students out of public school or private school or whatever school they've been in um, over the break, and they're not putting them back in for the spring. So we have a lot of new people saying, okay, I feel okay about the homeschooling part, but how in the world do I do everything else too? When do I get the chores done, laundry bills, all those other things that I have to do on top of schooling my children. Well, I, I know how it is in, in certain ways, uh, especially with my wife back at home. You'd think, hey, I have more time, right? Wrong. I have less time. And uh, <laughs> and it, it was better when I was uh, having to cart him back and forth in certain things. But you're right. It, time just flies by. And for Suzanne with five kids, how does she do it? How is she able to manage uh, her cla- her homeschool curriculum and her kids and also manage the house. So how do you do that? So the first thing you have to do is recognize that your house is going to be um, harder to clean, harder to keep track of, harder to maintain because you're home more. So the average family is leaving at 8 in the morning or 7 in the morning. You got it. That's so true. I just wanted to right. say I know that. Go ahead. Yeah, and so, you know, at noon, our house looks like a tornado in comparison to other people. Well, they left, and their house looks exactly the way they left it. So they don't have the same type of, um, well, just just the hardship <laughs> that, the, that the house has to go through on a day-to-day basis. So give, you know, cut yourself a little bit of slack, first of all, and, and don't compare because comparison is the thief of joy. You know, just don't compare yourself to the other people that aren't living in their house as much as you are. So that's the first thing is recognize it's going to be a little bit harder. Um, but the second thing is, is chores. Just in general, you know, how do you handle chores? So do you all have a chore chart at your house? We don't have a chore chart, so I'm, I, I wish I could just get people to uh, subscribe to all these things because, I mean, Suzanne, this, this is definitely a breath of, share, of fresh air. When we're talking about something at home, and let me give something to my listeners out there especially, is you're right. Uh, when my mom was watching the kids two days a week, it absolutely was a, a bomb went off, and I had to clean all that stuff up. And, and I think that my wife thinks it. Well, it won't happen when I'm home. Wrong. I just finished cleaning everything up about 11 o'clock before going on the air. It's good that I Mm. have that ability to go and do all that stuff because then the next day starts and there's disorder. So you you go through a lot of things. And how do you accomplish all those things? And that's a great point. You cannot compare. With five children, you sure as heck 
cannot compare yourself to somebody else. And God has given us great blessings, but there are many people who have chosen not to have many children. And their kids grow up and life becomes peaceful in certain aspects, I guess, with the number of toys all over the house uh, Mm -hmm. to the amount of art activities in the house to all those things. It's different when they become teenagers. It's different when they become 10 or 9. They become self-sufficient and leave themselves in a room. So it's a different story. So the one thing I wanted to know about is how do we stop this insanity? Uh, That's a great, great point. Stop the insanity. I forget where that that came from, but (laughs) Susan, how do you really do that in a lot of ways? Especially, I know you like order. I know you like discipline. And your your husband's a Marine. Well, your house does not look like a Marine's barracks, does it? No, it's not. It's not stick and stand, but it is one of the more orderly houses that I've been in. Whenever we visit other people's families with more, you know, fewer or more children, our house usually compares a little bit cleaner. And I think it has to do with that discipline of the husband. You know, the Marine mindset has trickled down through me and then all through the children. We enjoy order. We don't like it cluttered. We don't like chaos. Now, does it get that way? Absolutely. At two in the afternoon or right after school is finished, I mean, there's not a clean surface in the house. But then we hit it hard at 430 and we turn on some loud music. We got some 80s pop going on (laughs) and we get it done in about 20 minutes. Oh, 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 oh. I have to interrupt on that. 20 minutes? Really? Well, it's, well, you know, it gets clean really. Oh, you, it gets you, very you have fast. five kids. That's I forgot. Okay, that's go right. Ahead. You got twelve arms. If you count mine, you got twelve arms doing this. And we all were here. We all know what we messed up. We divided up. They have their marching orders. They have a chore chart. We've delegated this. We have sat down and done the planning and the preparing. We've trained them, so it's not like you know I have to go and teach every child every single time. So as they got older, we trained them on the new. You know, what the new task is. Okay, this is your new chore. This is how it gets done. This is when it's done. And then we say, go and check. Check the way mama checks or check the way daddy checks. Don't check the way you check. (laughs) And try to get them to look at it through the parent's eyes. Is it completed? If it's not completed and you ask me to come check it, well, then you get to do a toilet. And so nobody has toilets as a chore. Toilets are are unassigned to any child so that if something doesn't get done properly, that's their extra assignment. It's not punishment. It's just, hey, you need to pay closer attention and make sure this thing gets done properly. So it's up to them to come get us to check it. So it's up to them to make sure it's done properly before they ask for us to check their chores. And that's the thing. you got to give them some ownership in the situation. And, yes. and, again, you have some kids that are a little older that are, are manning the, 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 uh, the ship in certain ways. I have Ava at age eight, then I have Anastasia at four, who's a maniac, then I have (laughs) little Annika at three, who was helping with chores today, to my son, who is uh, one, and my other son, who is just born. So it's a little different, and did you ever have that, those numbers, that kind of close, or you never had to deal with that? Mine are closer. So the oldest was six whenever the number five was born. So I have five babies in six and a half years. And uh, that was definitely the hardest part because I could only count on the six-year-old and the four-and-a-half-year-old to really help at all. And you want to say, go and do. You know, you want to say, okay, go do this, go do that, because you're, you're trying to get many tasks accomplished at the same time. And so our mindset as parents is go and do. And what we need to do is say, come and help, come and help. So they're doing it alongside us. We're, it might not go as fast as we'd like, but we're training them alongside us. And that way it cuts down the frustration when you say, go and clean up the playroom or go and you know, match the socks. You go and check, and not very much has been done because we're talking about the attention span of a 4-year-old and a 6-year-old. And so you can't expect them to do it the way an adult does it. So you have to you know, kind of stop thinking, go and do, but say, come and help. And then as they get older, they're going to say, Mom, how about I'll do this while you do that. They come up with the idea. So now that I have a 12-year-old and then a 10-year-old and a 9-year-old, they do the bulk of the chores. But you know what? They're the ones that do the bulk of the messing up, too. <laughs> and so they do their chores that are assigned to them. We rotate every two weeks. And so they're not stuck with the same chores every, you know, all the time. And, and you just have a plan. So chore charts don't work for everybody. But in general, so having some sort of delegation so you know who 
who has ownership in this area? Who messed up? Who didn't get it done? And, of course, you reward. You say, you know, great job. You know, this person has done their chore every single day without fail. He gets an extra whatever it is. If it's extra 15 minutes on computer time, if it's staying up late, if it's getting to choose the movie for movie night that week. And so your reward doesn't have to be monetary. It can be if you want to pay for chores. But the main idea is, say, come and help and sit down with your husband, sit down with your wife, and just have some sort of plan. What are the things that drive you batty? If it's laundry, get them in there to help. Even the littlest guys, you know, four-year-olds and three-year-olds can fold um, the washcloths, the, yes. you know, the wash rags, and the towels. Um, matching socks is great. That's mathematical computation right there at preschool level. You're matching like with like. That's part of school. Um, getting them to sort the clothes with you. Okay, we're going to put dark pile, light pile. And so they're really seeing. Also, it keeps them from making such a mess because they they are involved in the work. Exactly. So what happens, so, Suzanne, in, in a way that when parents don't want their kids to be in charge or, or to be not in control but willing to give them the opportunity to do these chores when so many people are so crazy, they, they nitpick and say, I want to do it myself because I do it right? Well, that, is, that does happen, and unfortunately, that's, you know, many, many of my college roommates and friends and everything in college had never done anything. Many of them had never done anything. So they look like kind of morons <laughs> when you get to college level and you don't know how to sleep. You don't know how to run a broom. You don't know how to turn on a vacuum. You can't wash your own clothes. And so if they can just look at the detriment and look at this child and say, wait, this is part of their training, and am I really helping them? You can go back and fix it afterwards. You can go back behind them if you want. But my, my idea here is better done than perfect. At least it's done. Is it perfect? No. But you know what? It's going to get messed up again exactly, tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so, so just checking it off and saying, good enough, good enough, good enough, really gives you a lot of peace, and it will get better. And if it's one of those things that drives you, like, you know, the, the streaks on the mirror, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with the, the perfectionist people as they can't stand it if there's a streak on a mirror or a streak on a window. So, yeah, after they go to bed, I'll go back behind them, and I'll do a quick wipe. But at least I didn't have to do the whole mirror. I just had to do a quick touch-up. So... Right. Just, but just some, some people don't want to go back and do their work again. <laughs> that's true. That's true. They would rather just do it. They're frustrated in general. They feel overworked. And so looking at it also as family time, you know, a lot of boys don't really like to talk to their parents face-to-face. It's hard for them to make eye contact. It's hard for them to think of what to say next. It's just one of those kind of rites of passage as they find themselves as young men They don't want to share a whole lot or ask a lot of questions. But if you are doing a task side-by-side with your son, it's amazing the things they'll talk about because the focus is no longer on them. The focus is on the activities that you're accomplishing together. And so if you can look at it as another family event, another relationship-building time, and, oh, yeah, by the way, we're also getting the tub done, then that really hopefully will encourage parents to say, this is, this is not just about you and your house and your cleanliness standards. This is about time, training your children. It is about their education. And at the same time, it's about how do you want them to live as adults, keeping their, maintaining their homes. Exactly. And so we get back. I'm, I have some like quick tidbit questions for the first half hour of the show. Not like, yeah, th- this sounds like a pie-in-the-sky opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, I, I, I deal with it every day, and this weekend was pretty frustrating, especially when my one daughter stole my keys when I thought I misplaced them and put them somewhere, and it took me a day to figure out that she did take them based on some investigation. So really, and it, it just and the whole weekend, helping my wife, who's still recovering from surgery, and just saying, yeah. and then there's nowhere to run into the office. My office is home, so there's nowhere for me to run at all. I don't know right. where to run except be a little bit and then tomorrow we're going down to uh so i have to make sure the show goes quickly uh uh below zero temperatures we're going to be at minus 20 windshield in about two hours here in pittsburgh and i know in texas we're not dealing with that and i don't think matt i mean i don't think that uh suzanne's used to me talking about that at all so we get back more with the chores situation getting kids to do chores that's fine but to how to handle the insanity the 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 long day that, 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 again, Suzanne has to deal with. We'll get into it. You're listening to the Total Tutor Show, and we'll be back in just a moment.
We're back to the Told Tutor Show on the Told Education Network. Again, toldtutor.net for more information. Twitter, Told Tutor, Neil S. Haley, Facebook. Again, minus 20 degrees. Uh, trust me, my, my studio is not minus 20 degrees, but uh, my wife will only allow one hour of uh, freezing. I was freezing them out this, mor- this afternoon, recording for an hour and a half. I was supposed to go to two hours, and I texted her saying, we got another interview. She said, we're getting cold up here. I go up, and it says 65 degrees on the thermostat. <laughs> I said, okay, it went from 70 to 65 degrees in an hour and a half. So here's a scientific question for you, Suzanne. What if uh, we had ahead, went ahead and we had to do two hours, and I would put the temperature up to 75 for one hour? Would, and it stayed at about 75 degrees, would it drop to 65 in two hours or not? I don't know. Well, I live in Texas. I don't have to think about that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that's that's the thing, and I, it's it's just it's a strange thing for sure. And again, we're talking to Suzanne Go. So, if anyone wants to answer that question, that'd be fantastic for me to figure it out. And my wife said, "Oh, you can run the heat. I'm sure it wouldn't mess up the recording." Yeah, right. That, right. I, that and it would. But okay, so we're we're going into this whole chores thing, and I, I, I mean. I've been there, done that, had the T-shirt, and, and but in the way. But again, we're not training them at home, and and I've developed some good in, um, ability for Ava to clean up, but she doesn't do a perfect job. But, right. but, but and then you, you have the allowance for her, and you have all these different things. But the problem is, how do we? Come, how, and this is the, the big thing with five kids, with my wife working full time, myself have two or three jobs, uh, or two, three, three, probably eighty hours a week working. How, how in the world can you get the clothes washed, put away, keep the house in complete order, and have any time for free time? How, is it, you got to really have a team involved. Could you imagine if they were, when they were all little like that, you didn't have this ability that you're able to do now, right? No, when they were, when they were little and I was home all day, the house was definitely messier. Um, we still had the same idea, though, about 4 o'clock or so. Maybe 3.30 is a little bit earlier in the day. We would try to hit it hard. We, meaning I would turn on the music, and I would start trying to say, send them to start picking up and cleaning up. So as long as you have a method of some sort, just planning it out and saying, you know what, I'm not going to get the whole house clean top to bottom today. The, the dust is going to stay on the high shelves. And, the, you know, we're just trying to clear a path. You know, can we walk <laughs> in the living room? Things like that. And setting a time limit. Of I'm gonna you know I'm gonna do this for the next five songs. So that's almost 20 minutes. And so if you put the stereo on loud and you and you work hard for for five songs, you can actually accomplish quite a bit in this kind of sprint idea, especially with the children helping and involved. Um, at the very least, if you can't if they're too little to be involved, you can sit, sit them down and have them playing in a certain area. You know, back in the day, we all had play pins. And they weren't play yards, they were play pins. The mom threw a couple of toys in there, some blocks, and that's where the baby stayed for while that she was, was doing That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Yeah. But people, so, yeah. Just do that. Just You just kind of contain them. Exactly. And, and so at least, the very least, while you're cleaning, if, you're, if your guys aren't quite big enough to help, while you're cleaning, at the very least, they're not messing up behind you. And so, bingo, yeah. But but see, but, but but see, here's the bingo that I'm going to say. Well, come on now, Suzanne. The the bingo is that people will get absolutely frustrated in the fact is that uh, th- that people say, "Oh my gosh, how are they going to grow if they're in a pack and play? You're not having the ability for them to be to be so investigative." What do you say to people like that? Oh, I put them in the pack and play to clean for an hour and a half or two hours. What do you say? <laughs> I. I, I, I mean, you can't change their minds. For me, I just say, well, you know, this generational thing of entitlement and this generational spoiling thing that we've done to our kids, I think we're starting to see, you know, in society what the entitlement has done and how we're treated and how, you know, people treat each other. These young, you know, young 20, mid-20s and early 20s are growing up, what their attitude is and whether or not they're willing to work hard and if they know how to do things. We're starting to see a little bit of what's happening and so but then you look back at two generations ago and how much less entitlement there was these babies were really seen and not heard i don't think we should go back that far i like being i like the relationship i like the familiarity but it's just up to each parent what they want if they want a child that must be entertained at all times and engaged at all times and they want an eight-year-old that expects their full attention if that child is awake go for it go ahead entertain them all day (laughs) 
that's not what I want my life to look like. I enjoy having adult conversation, thinking of, you know, having a child that needs my attention, but he comes and stands next to me and waits for me to look at him. He doesn't poke me or prod me, mama, 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 mama. And that's because I trained him at two. You wait. You wait until I talk, I talk to you. I'm in charge of when I talk to you, not you. And so it just takes some time, and, it, and mainly it takes sitting down and planning it out. Just have a conversation, have a thought process, and try and carve out some time, just like we carve out time for work and for our schedules and computer time and uh, networking and advertising, all these things we have to do for our businesses. This is important. We need to prioritize it or we're going to suddenly show up with these high schoolers that don't know how to do anything, expect everything to be handed to them, and you don't like them. And I want to continue to like my children. (laughs) No, I see, and, and, and I absolutely agree. And when we talk about this entitlement fact, you're right. We have to entertain kids all the time. How dare we let them go and, and, and play on their own? And that's really, I, I want to know where that fact and that situation has occurred. Because what it's done is that kids cannot entertain themselves at all. And, right. and teaching them to entertain themselves is such a great thing. And that's where when my wife says, "Oh, why you all you did you all you did was have them do chores with you." Well, that was great bonding time. We got to spend right. time together. We got to be able to do things. I'm teaching Ava, you know, the dishwasher and all these different mm-hmm. things. And it's it's very very good. Now the thing is, Suzanne, you say getting it all done, putting all the laundry away, making sure all of it's together. How many extra hours, how many hours a week do you put into doing the home with the children? I would say it's probably an hour and a half a day of chore type thing. Not all at once, but from morning, you know, we have morning chores, we have afternoon chores, and we have evening chores. We do laundry on Thursdays only. I hate laundry. I don't like to use the word hate, but I really, really, really dislike laundry. And so I have relegated it to Thursdays. (laughs) So it just depends. I mean, we have a plan, and Thursdays are laundry day, and we try our darndest to get it all done in one day. If it doesn't work out, then Daddy pitches in on Friday night, and he helps to put all the clothes away and finish up with us. Um, But, you know, for seven people, it's difficult, and we live out in the country, so our clothes get very dirty because we got lots of tree climbers and chickens and everything else that they get filthy with. So it's a lot of laundry, but... If I know that I only have to do it on Thursday, then I can get it done. But the main thing is music, making it fun. We turn on music. We review the literature that we were talking about for the day. We talk about The Hobbit or whatever it is coming up next. It's good conversational time. It, it's not punishment. It's it's just part of life. I don't know why people think hard work is a detriment to our children. They they like to help. They like to contribute. As long as we we pitch it that way. I mean, you know, people buy what you want them, what you tell them to buy. Well, the kids are the same way. <laughs> you say this is this is this is not hard. This is just not something that's a handheld screen. That's all. <laughs> exactly. And so so and this is interesting your perspective. What you're giving in this perspective of five children and again where people are rolling their eyes already and, and to have <laughs> them doing chores and understanding that it's not all play. It's not life is not all about play and having fun. It's about right. working. But when we have one sixth of our country not working, that's not right. a very good percentage. And we also have a situation where we have people that don't want to work. They don't enjoy work and they don't want to be right. involved in it. And that they can have someone take care of them, they're fine with that. So right. really, it's you're, we're, we're definitely in a, a generational. Uh, type of uh, rebellion going on that we're just yeah. trying to be normalcy and just get let, let live and teach them how to work hard. So right. great point so far you've been able to make, Suzanne. And kind of closing all this is, uh, you know, the chore chart, getting everything done. Now you're not going to ever get upset if they did it wrong, right? As long as they did uh, uh, Right, right. Because I'm, you know, incarnate perfect and all that other things. No, of course I get upset. Of course I lose my temper. Of course I get frustrated. Of course, whenever I've told them 5,000 times to do it this way and they didn't do it that way again, of course I get upset. I wish I didn't, but of course you do. Um, You know, hopefully, I always hope that whenever I have one of those moments of, ah, how many times do I have to tell you this? I always hope that maybe that moment will help them to remember the next time. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. You know, they have off days too. They don't do things perfectly. You know, I'm the I'm the adult here pushing forty and yet I expect my eight year old to never mess up and I mess up, you know, all the time. So you know, you try to have grace, but the good thing is that it's a learning process. Um 
And the main thing is having a good time while you're doing chores helps them to recognize that you can turn anything into an enjoyable experience. Today, when they were cleaning up the playroom, um, I said, you know, I said, okay, go clean up the playroom. You know, we'll be done in 20 minutes. Okay, the music is on. Everybody scatters, and everybody goes and does it. So I've got two of them in the playroom cleaning up, and I see them running around, and one kid is just standing there. And he's seven. He's just standing there, not moving. And the other, the nine-year-old girl, is running back and forth, picking up, putting things away. And so I'm about to get onto this lazy seven-year-old boy. <laughs> Why are you not helping? And so I run in there to see what's going on. And they've devised a game where he is pretending to use a joystick and pushing buttons, and she's a robot. And so he's telling her, <laughs> pick it up, put it down, and he's pretending to direct her actions with a joystick. Um, showing her how to do it. So they have somehow picked up this idea of knowing that work doesn't have to be hard. It can be a game, and they've devised their own game, their own playtime, while they're also getting work done. Uh, I think it's fantastic, and I think people need to jot that down uh, with a pen and paper and figure out how to get these things done. And the thing, the, the process is that, you know, if you let everything go, chaos begins. Yeah. If you're too overbearing, Chaos yes. it begins in your life. You're just you're, you're drained because just think you work all day, you clean all night. When yes. is there any time? And it just continues. So you need to have that help of those children. And if right. You, well, and you don't want to resent them. I mean, you don't want to resent the. You don't want them to not feel like they can get things out. I mean, you know, childhood is messy, and it should be messy and enjoyable. If if you resent them getting out a book off the shelf or getting a toy off the shelf, then what's the point? So. You need to know that it's okay for them to get stuff out because they're going to put it up later, and that's just normal. And so it's just not a big deal whenever they've been trained to put it up. But anyhow, that's that's one thing that you have to you have to look at is making sure that you have it scheduled in, you have it trained, and you have a plan. You just thought it through. Talk to your husband. Talk to your wife. And just think it through. What do you want your life to look like? If you're okay with some chaos, that's fine. It's whatever you want. Just recognize that really come and help is more of the idea of go and do. Exactly. Okay, when we get back, now we're going to jump from the chore thing, which, again, Suzanne is up till probably after the show's over cleaning her house in Texas. But, uh, <laughs> but, but, but uh, at least she's not dealing with freezing temperatures because I feel the temperature dropping every minute and getting a little colder in here <laughs> and before we know it. But we're going to heat things up in a way with talking some pop culture and how we can handle them with parenting. We're going to go with Justin Bieber first, which – Suzanne has no idea. We might go into some. We might go into Miley Cyrus, and then we might even go into other just average parents and what they're dealing with. Oh, I know it. The re method. We want to go into that. The rye method out in the. That's a chaotic mess in California. A lot of things to discuss with Suzanne goes. Uh, you're listening to the Tutor Show, and we'll be back in just a moment. We're back to the Tolter Show on the Toll Education Network. Again, tolter.net for more information. Twitter, Toll Tutor, Neil S. Haley. Facebook, LinkedIn, Neil Haley. And I'm with Suzanne Goes from Flip Flop Learning. And we, so far, quarter one and quarter two, as I call them quarters, uh, was really about chores and how parents and and that are homeschooling their kids and how the kids can be part of that chore system to not allow it to go over bounds. So now let's go to chaos. Let's go to utter chaos. Let's look at Justin Bieber. And uh, I think we were preparing for this, especially with his uh, his romances and different things like this. That he was not making. He was trying to be more adult before he even became eighteen, and uh, to the point where he's making all this money, and yet he doesn't know how to entertain himself. That's a great relationship we talked last quarter uh, of the show. So what is your thought in the fact about how, you know, before Justin's whole incident with the car, that he really made poor decisions because he always wants to entertain himself? I think it's hard because he doesn't, yeah, he just doesn't have boundaries. He doesn't have real-life boundaries. And so when we don't have boundaries, it's very dangerous for anybody it doesn't matter if you're 60 or if you're 16 uh he didn't have a boundary of a finite amount of money he doesn't have a finite number of friends he doesn't there's nothing finite there's no bottom of the barrel for him and so i don't know if any one of us could actually be very disciplined in his situation i think 
he, you know, for for as much as he has at his disposal, disposal, I think he's he's not doing too terribly. But what do you think about it? Now, see, now, see, here's the thing. I was preparing this to happen because, again, he stole. The older he gets, the more money he gets, and the more he tries to be somebody he's not. Somebody's mm-hmm. painting that persona, and the mom really has dealt with a lot of things in her life and now she's recovered and she's pretty much Justin's person and yet Justin probably is able to call a lot of the shots himself. Uh, the the thing he led to him where he got the DUI plus uh, driving uh, over the speed limit and stuff like this, his decision he made uh, putting people's lives in danger was huge. And you could just see his, his decision-making process as he went out of jail and, you know, saluting his crowd and his fans. He doesn't care about the average, yeah. average everyday person. All he cares about, he's a narcissist in so many aspects. Mm-hmm. And uh, how do you think as parents, we could keep our kids become that narcissist like Justin Bieber? Uh, you just have to keep on reminding them of it. I think showing them other, other avenues and, and other people's situations, helping them to be empathetic and um, put themselves in other people's shoes. It's it's really hard though when you have everybody in the world telling you how great you are and adorable. And that is something we have to watch out because we do tell our children how wonderful they are all the time. And um, we've been, you know, my husband and I have been noticing how much we compliment the kids, which is great. But we decided we really need to compliment them on their efforts. You know, not you're beautiful, you're smart, but hey, that was a good effort. I like how kind you were to that other person. And so complimenting them on the things they, uh, uh, the things they do, the things they accomplish, rather than who they are intrinsically that, honestly, they have nothing to do with. You know, she's pretty, but she didn't do that. <laughs> she's cute. And that gets you out of trouble, and it's not okay. So I think poor Justin has all these people telling him how great he is kind of intrinsically. So it's difficult for him to really need to be thoughtful towards others. It's so true. And it's uh, and what, what he's done is, is made bad decisions, and he's a role model. Right. And he, what he's shown in his role model sense is so much. But if you're a parent of Justin Bieber, you got to step in right now because the train wreck's about to come. If we right. watch behind the music and different things like this, this is just the beginning. Uh, yeah. This is the beginning of the end for him in so many ways of maybe a, a drug overdose or something like that, and then this is a story career over. So what yeah. advice would you give parent, a parent to get Justin back in order? Uh, uh, how old is he? Is he 18 yet? I don't I even think know. He's about 18, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. I kind of feel like it's, it, I mean, I hate to say it, but it's kind of too late. I mean, hopefully he has a mentor or somebody that he really puts a lot of value and a lot of stock in their uh, opinion and how, whether or not they're hanging out with them. And, you know, his true friends hopefully can kind of breathe into him some of some of these values and listen, you're, you're not acting like who you want to be and you need to take a step back and look at this. But, um, I don't know how salvageable it is. Hopefully the next mistake is big enough to wake him up, but small enough to not do permanent damage. And, and that, that, how do you do that? How do you explain to somebody who's an adult saying, you know what, you need to change. And he's like, you know, I know it all. He's right. going to have to fall flat in his face uh, to deal with it. And the, and the parents, their job is, or mom is their job is not to stay down to earth, to not make the bad decisions so that finally Justin's ready to turn his life around. And he says, oh, I just have to watch mom and see what mom's doing. Or I have to look at my uncles and see what they're doing. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. the key component. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't, I mean, it's it's a hard thing. You know, we can't, I wish we could control every single life of every single child and <laughs> choose it for them. But he's at the point where she's done the groundwork. Um, you know, the nation has done the groundwork of how he's turned out. Every, you know, his fame, his, his handlers, his, whatever you want to call them, his agents. The groundwork has already been set. And this is a point where he has to sink or swim. And hopefully this was a big enough upset, but a small enough upset. I mean, it was a small one. Nothing terrible happened. Um, he got arrested, and hopefully that scared him enough to say, man, I don't want to do that again. But if he feels untouchable and the punishment was just a slap on the wrist and he, it doesn't bother him, then he may repeat it. 
Uh, it's, it's so true. And if he if he repeats it, look out. So the the vice I'm going to look at Justin in a lot of ways is just get Justin to focus on what his true passion is, which is music, and yes. to start to step the bar up to say, well, how can I get bigger in music and put mm-hmm. more time and effort and keep myself away from these people that are pulling me down for sure, you know? Right. Agree? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. He he needs he needs some sort of project. I, I think he. I don't know. I wonder if he got burned out. I don't know. Who knows how how it feels to be somebody that has to play the same songs, you know, over and over and over again in a new city. You know, I don't know. That doesn't seem like it would hold a whole lot of attention for too long for anybody. But if you love your music, you know, hopefully he can come out with something new and something that'll hold his interest as a young man that has had so much granted to him so early. It's so much granted to him, and, and to get him to turn around, and, and we see these turnarounds in, in, in sports and celebrity. They finally have said, oh, you know what, I can't allow this to happen anymore. Uh, think about Tanya Harding's story, and now Tanya's out sharing yeah. what she's doing. And uh, trying to reach out to Tanya, no no dice, the, saying mm-hmm. still Portland, and I think she's in L.A. She was on Access Hollywood, so I said, you know what, i got to wait for this media blitz then. But who will know who Tanya Harding is one or two years from now? So, yeah. it, so it's really a, a tough situation that that that's happening in so many ways with Justin. And my thought as a parent is you're going to have to intervene, but you're also going to have to be that role model. And you're going to have to have a conversation, tell him the pros and cons of doing this. Cause right. right now he might've upped his stock, but he gives, he becomes a, if he becomes a drug tra- casualty or a drug issue, he's done, finished, kaput. Yes. Yes. I know. It's, and it's, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's like I said, it's almost too late. I don't know what you can do other than have a conversation because there's nothing that anybody can withhold from him. There's not, there's no consequence really to him except what other people think. So hopefully he's, you know, tied in enough to his mom and, and to somebody else that cares about him and loves him that he cares what they think. If he doesn't care what people think, it's going to be rough. And so that's why relationships are so important as, you know, you're seeing with your daughters and your new son and everything. You, we all know that our relationships are really paramount um, with our children, and if we can keep those intact, then we have a whole lot more say so in the choices they make. Exactly. Okay, when we get back, uh, we're going to continue. Now we're going to talk a little bit about how you prepare for Super Bowl. Do you have a Super Bowl party at Suzanne's house? We did talk about this uh, last week on the show, and I thought, well, let's address this with somebody else and see if she is even a sports fan. You listen <laughs> to the Total Tutor Show, and we'll be back in just a moment. We're back to the Toll Tutor Show on the Toll Education Network. Again, tolltutor.net for more information. Tour Toll Tutor, Neil S. Haley, Facebook, LinkedIn, Neil Haley. And I'm with Suzanne Goes from Flip Flop Learning. And we've talked about some uh, interesting with Justin Bieber. Now let's go to something that's more important than anything in the world. That's Super Bowl, Suzanne. How do you involve your kids in the Super Bowl? Or are you just, are they oblivious to what's going on? They're not oblivious. They they know that the Super Bowl is coming. Um, we're not a big sports family. We like we like lacrosse. We like you know throwing the football out in the in the yard. Um, we go and see our friends do basketball and play basketball out in the driveway. But as far as organized sports and watching a lot of TV and watching watching it and keeping up with it fanatically, we're not fans of. Uh, a particular team, um, but we do watch college football and things like that. But they know it's coming. Uh, we thought about planning a party, but I think we'll just go to somebody else's. <laughs> so that'll be fun. Exactly. So, so you, so you do have some sort of Super Bowl celebration every year with your kids? Not every year. No, this is really the first year that it's not been horrific. <laughs> Sorry, that doesn't help you very much. You've got a few years where it's really hard, isn't it, taking the kids out at night. Um, with bedtime so, rituals. So, 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 so you're taking them out. They're not going to be. They're not going to do it at home. No, we'll take them. We'll take them with us. We we enjoy. You know, we like them. We like having them around with us. And so, you know, it's fun. And, and the people that we go to their house, they have kids, and so it actually provides entertainment for their children. That way, their children. You know, all the kids are kind of hanging out together, and so they're not underfoot as much. Whenever you bring more kids, they all entertain each other. So, um, you know, so we'll go, uh, but it, this is the first week, the first year that the five-year-old, now that the baby is five, she doesn't have a meltdown, you know, at 8 p.m. and, oh, the whole party's over and we've ruined everything because we kept her out too late. So now that they can actually push their night times a little bit further, it's, it's a lot more fun. So, so what about y'all? So I, was y'all so, so, so no, I was asking you, so you don't, you didn't do the Super Bowl parties at your house? Just your family? No. Ever? Um, growing up? No, no, talking... 
Hey, no, never. 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 So never. Did, was the Super Bowl on the TV when you guys couldn't go anywhere? Mm, probably on the radio, but we don't we're not big T V watchers, so we might have it on the radio or have it in the background, but we don't usually sit around and watch a lot of T V. We're we're more about doing. I don't know. It's just our lifestyle is just more about doing things, accomplishing things, reading books, accomplishing projects. Uh, you know, since my husband, he played football in, in junior high and high school, but it's just not something that he really enjoys. He enjoys Formula One racing. So if Formula One racing is on, absolutely, that's on the TV. But um, football is just not something that's that's a feature for us for, I guess, just because he doesn't like it. I don't know. Oh, uh, because your husband doesn't like football. No, he's, he's not his main thing. So it's, it's Formula One racing is his sport of choice. <laughs> So, so, so okay, so what about you guys have the Formula One racing on in the house sometimes? Oh, yeah, yeah, several, any time that he thinks about it and it's on. But really, it's, you know, we're, we're more outdoorsy type people and enjoy that kind of thing and uh, accomplishing tasks, you know, accomplishing whatever project we want to get done this weekend. Like this, this past weekend, we're building a chicken coop, and that's fun for the family to design together and build and plan. So, we, you know, we're kind of counterculture. We don't do the same thing as everybody else, obviously. <laughs> So what about you? Do you Super Bowl party no, so, at your house? So we have not, but I, I definitely because of finally, I guess every since the uh, Steelers were in 2005, my two favorite teams are the Steelers and the Broncos. So I am just really enthused about this Super Bowl, especially cold weather Super Bowl. And yes. if somehow I was allowed out of the house, I could probably cover, and I'd be at media day tomorrow in New York City to cover the Super Bowl. But I won't. I will be at home, uh, and I will be at home uh, for the Super Bowl and seeing the Broncos beat the Seahawks even though everyone's for Seattle. So are your kids going to follow along? Are they going to cheer around? Do they understand the game of football? Yes, yes. They absolutely understand it. We take them, you know, we live here in Aggie Town and Aggie Land. So we live where the A&M, you know, university is. So they've been to football games and we've played uh, they, with our PE co-ops and things like that. They've played tackle football. Um, you know, so they've played all the sports with different, we have a PE co-op that we do all the different sports with, volleyball, basketball, and they learn all the rules and they play on teams just like you would in public school. Um, we just do it once a week instead of every day. And then they, of course, with the five of them, they can play a lot of sports on their own. <laughs> and we have friends come over and we play that way. So they understand it. Um, probably not the two little girls. They probably don't understand it quite yet. But, and we've taken them to a few things. Um, and of course, Baylor, I, I've, I graduated from Baylor, so we go to the, but those Baylor games. But I guess the um, professional sports is just not something that really holds our interest as much, uh, just because of all the, well, honestly, all the commercials and the, you know, it just steals their innocence. I think it's it's it has stuff on there, even during the commercials, that I just don't want my kids thinking is normal <laughs> yet. They'll, they'll find out soon enough. Oh, they're definitely going to find out soon enough for, for sure, Suzanne, in, in so many ways. And then I want to kind of, and I'll, I kind of want to break into uh, the specifics about commercials in general and how to get them watching these Super Bowl commercials and not have something inappropriate pop up. But look, now, so you're, you, they are college fans in certain ways. So you go to Baylor games and Texas A&M games. Here, here and there, we're not, you know, we're not fanatics, so we're not fans. We just here and there. So we get a ticket, then we, we've probably gone to. Maybe two games a, a season, um, and we take, try to take different kids, so the kids that haven't been lately. We have one that really wants to be an Aggie, so he gets to go most often. And then um, a couple of them want to be Baylor Bears, and so I take those to the other ones up up in Waco. But, you know, it's it's expensive, and it's a long drive, and I guess we could just turn the TV on. But like I said, we're just not a family that has a TV <laughs> on very much. So, so you're connected to Johnny Manziel then? <laughs> yes, they they like Johnny. They know Johnny football, so they they are very much. And uh, some of our friends got pictures with them and everything just a lot the other week. And so that's a big name around here, Johnny football. <laughs> okay, so so the, a good point you brought up about uh, again the, the Super Bowl and they understand the game. Now you're going to a party. How are you going to prepare these kids to go out? That's another great part of the whole community outlook. Where hey, you know you're homeschooled, Matt, um, Suzanne. You never take your kids out, right? <laughs> No, that's not the case at all. So tell us no. the story about how you're going to prepare them for going out in the community to watch a football game where there are going to be people that care. Probably not as many in Texas that we care about either or either of the teams, but I think it's more about the, the, the whole cold weather Super Bowl and laughing at all these people in the cold uh, temperatures watching 
kids, people playing football, but uh, how are you going to keep the kids from behaving well at this party? Uh, they've just grown up in it. You know, the training has already happened, so really, um, you know, they go to church every single week. They go to co-op every single week. We go to people's houses, goodness, many, many, many times a week. Um, so, and people come to our houses, and so it's not a big preparation. We're going to a, friend, a family friend's house, and we're going to watch the Super Bowl. And that's kind of it. So they, you know, it's all this part of life. It's, it's not a big not a big deal. Uh, if they get bored and they don't want to watch the TV program, I'm sure they'll they'll ask, "Can I go play?" And I'll you know I'll have to make sure that's okay with the mom. But other than that, uh, or if they get too bored, we'll just leave. You know, if they if they're going to act up and not behave, then we don't do the whole thing of make everybody else miserable. We'll we'll take care of it and take the kid out and either go home or take the kid out until he or she can behave. Um, but we're not one to let a kid fuss and make the adults miserable at the party. So yeah, definitely. And so uh, the, it's funny. Brian Clems last week on the show is we're kind of really still gearing up in the Super Bowl. This is definitely the Super Bowl week. Uh, are you going to have a pool going on no. <laughs> at the party? Are, is, is, is your, your friends are going to have the pool out and everything like that? No, they not, might. I don't not, know. Not, they not might. A swimming, not a swimming pool. A pool for the game. Sport, yes, yeah. I know what you're talking about. They might have it. I don't know. I haven't. Um, like you said, the Texans down here. We're not. Super interested in, in it. It's more of a just an event, just another reason to have a have a fun party. So there'll be some barbecue and and, and hanging out and talking and drinking and having a good time. But um, I don't I don't know if they'll if they'll be doing the the pool or not. Uh, I probably won't participate if I, I don't. I, I'll, I'm rooting for the Broncos just because. I like the Broncos. Yes. But, uh, Who would like the Seahawks? Right. I, I'm rooting for the Broncos as well. And I had Norm Johnson from the Seattle Seahawks on today, and it was a Steeler. And he's telling me that the relationship between the Steelers and Seahawks is so similar, it's crazy. But you're not going to turn me off my Broncos. And honestly, it, 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 if you played nine Super Bowls, Broncos and Steelers, I mean Broncos and, uh, and Seattle, Broncos win eight times, but it's just uh, one game, one situation, uh, and how you you, you definitely uh, get through this. So now the commercials. Yeah. This is a concern I have because, again, yeah. we look at pop culture. We look at things like Disney Channel. We look at ABC Family, which is an absolute joke. Uh, all these different things that can really expose your kids. Now everyone's going to watch the commercials even more than the football game, especially yep. when it's going to be a blowout and Denver's killing them. Uh, yeah. So how do you keep them maybe not to watch or if they are watching to, to, to understand this is inappropriate and really shouldn't be watching it? They, um, they police themselves now. You know, again, the way they've grown up, um, they get a lot of information and a lot of guidance from us. Um, and so they're not inundated on a day-in and day-out basis about society and about what society values um, they're aware of it. So we think of it as inoculation. Um, we give them little tidbits here and there. You know, if they watch one commercial and it damages their character, then I'm not doing a great job as a parent, you know. <laughs> so it shouldn't be able to be undone with one off word or one, um, you know, one scene that they shouldn't have seen or that we wish they didn't see. You know, so we do try to protect them, just like you protect a sapling as the sapling grows up into a tree. However, I do want. I don't want them to go crazy when they turn 18. They've never seen anything. So this is an event that's an opportunity for everybody to be sitting around. They're going to watch the the commercials. They'll see it, and then we'll talk about it. Um, usually, you know, we've been out and about at different things, and there's been some scantily clad women or scantily clad uh, mannequins or something like that. And the five year old has actually told the shop owner, "Excuse me, that's inappropriate." <laughs> I mean, she doesn't have ours yet. She says, it's inappropriate. And she tells the shop owner, that's inappropriate. You need to cover that mannequin up. We shouldn't be seeing all that cleavage. And, you know, so they grow up knowing what their little eyes should be seeing and shouldn't be seeing. And they take care of it. They police themselves for the most part because they're not inundated. It's not something they're in all day long every day. It's unusual for them. So so are your girls into makeup at all? Uh, they have asked. They have asked me if they can wear lip gloss. Isn't that and, terrible? Some of the lip gloss is going on. The the way they call it lip gloss is really lipstick. <laughs> no, it's chapstick. It's chapstick. 
So it's not even lip gloss. It's not. There's no color to it at all. But they they would like to wear. And I think it's more about being grown up like Mama rather than being grown up like uh, you know any movie stars or anything like that. I'm not sure what the purpose is, but I'm I'm fine with them wearing chapstick. And so. Again, you know, little baby steps, inoculation, so there's no big freak out. There's no huge pendulum swing. Um, but the main thing is just having a plan. Again, talking to your husband, talking to your wife, making sure you're on the same page. Just having a conversation helps you to kind of define what you actually like and be intentional about your choices rather than, oh, my goodness, you, you just turned around and you saw your sixth grader wearing fishnet stockings and thigh-high boots. And you go, whoa, how did that happen? Um, so if you have conversations as you go, you're not going to have that slam in the face. It's going to be, you're, you're talking about it. So it's not going to be a shock as the child starts pushing the boundaries and starts seeing, I, you know, I really like this style or I really want to dress a certain way. You can talk about it and say, well, the reason we don't want you to is because we want your inside to match your outside. And you're a sweet girl, but that's not the message you're sending. And so we, you know, we talk a lot about what message they're sending with mm-hmm. all kinds of things. And, and how do you get that to get that again? You see them all the time w- with homeschooling them. Get those opportunities to have those conversations. And what age would you have those conversations? My nine year old is already asking me a lot of questions about um, why she doesn't necessarily want to dress that way herself and she doesn't necessarily want to wear makeup. But of course, we have cousins and lots and lots of public school friends and friends at church that are her age and are dressing much older. And she she has asked, why do they want to grow up so fast? And I think, you know, that makes them feel good. That makes them feel important. And she said, well, I feel important just because I know I'm important to you and Daddy. And so it just, I think just having time with the children and not having scheduled time, nothing is so scheduled and so hurried that at dinner time there's lulls in the conversation. People have a chance to think about, what do I want to say next? We have plenty of time for these kinds of conversations to pop up. Um, If you don't have time with it, I know know not everybody can homeschool. Not everybody has the time to be able to do that. But turning off the radio when you're in the car is a really good chance for you to talk with your kids. Uh, Wherever you're going, just keep the radio completely off. Keep the phone off. Turn it, you know, keep it in the dashboard or wherever you want to keep it where you're not seeing it, you're not hearing the texting or the phone ringing. And... You'll be amazed the types of conversations that come up because the kids are interested in you. They want to know you. You just have to give them a chance to speak, and you'll have these these chances for conversation. They want to know what you think, and they want you to like them, so they're ready for your input. Again, and we're talking to Suzanne Goes, Flip Flop Learning. As we're closing out this thing, and you're right about the conversation process, and especially even if you don't homeschool, you, you have those opportunities to have those conversations. And uh, when we're talking about lip gloss, the, the concern mm-hmm. I have is the ones that are more colored lip gloss that really yes. they're trying to wear makeup already, and, they're, and then they come and sneak some other makeup, and kids in third grade are wearing makeup, and it's just a very wow. sad society that we're dealing with. And a lot of, uh, and, and if you watch Disney Channel, if you watch ABC Family, these kids are exposed. They're, the way that you keep kids entertained all the time is that television, that television that can really, uh, uh, t- really take your family away from each other. And right now, if you would look at a lot of mainstream shows, and uh, I'm going to say I watch some of them, but I don't know if I should, is like Modern Family or different things. A lot of conversations that are very different. You watched the Grammys last night. Really, we went from a pretty entertaining show to really a political statement. Yes. How do you... Make sure if you say, hey, you can watch the Grammys a bit. This should be a family show. Do we know now to tune off and turn it off? Right. Because, I mean, the first maybe hour was okay. After that, it went to garbage, you know? Right. Yeah, and that's that's what happens. And and just being willing to to stand up for your own beliefs as far as what you want for your family, just not going along with the flow, not, you know, we're also worried about not hurting anybody else's feelings and not offending each other. But it seems like the good people are the ones that, uh, you know, these good guys, these ones with the, the traditional conservative, I don't want to say conservative, it's not the right word, but traditional values that you say, you know, I believe in family values, I believe in um, and moral, you know, morals and having those things. But because we're courteous and those are one of our values, it keeps us silent. Or we don't want to hurt somebody else's feelings by turning it off or whatever it is. We don't want to offend them because they think we're judging them. And 
that's where things get messed up, and kids don't know where the black, where the line is. And so when they see their parents they take a gentle stand, but it's still a firm stand, and you're not offending, and they say, whoa, we're not watching this. You don't have to be loud and raucous about it. You don't have to be offensive and judgmental. You exactly. just say, yeah, definitely. That's, just, that's just not for us. That's just not for us. That's okay. all. All right. Where can we find information on you? Purchase your book and learn more about you, Suzanne. Well, I just got my newest website up. It's called thekeytolearninganything.com, keytolearninganything.com. And I uh, took your advice and got it all set up where I do lots of consulting but hadn't had a way to contact me. If you didn't know me word of mouth or hadn't found me at a convention or a conference where I was speaking, it was hard for you to reach me to get some consulting. So now you can go to keytolearninganything.com and get some consulting on your particular family situation, how many kids you have, what their learning styles are, and I can actually help you particularly get started homeschooling. All right. Well, fantastic, Suzanne. Uh, we'll talk next month. And then the advice, I think, next is me for me to do some uh, social media coaching with you and really have you take it to the next level. So we'll talk soon, okay? All right. Thank All right, you. There. Okay. That was Suzanne Goes. Have a great day. We'll talk tomorrow. Great education talk. Good day, everyone. 